Okay, okay guys. I think we should get started. I mean, let's see if we have any about the audio. Yeah? Do you have any answers for us regarding the audio from the computer or something? No. If you, uh, if you ask for it and he left, then I assume he's getting it. I don't know. Yeah, the, the thing is we should get started. Okay. Never mind. Let's, let's open it. Okay, guys. So, hello and welcome to the Ruby Podcast. This is us. God, CTO of Jetro, hey. and myself, Nelva Adobe of Jetro, follow us on Twitter and share with us all the things about our talks. Um, this is Jetro, a startup based in Israel, California, and France. And we have obsession with rocks, like this. <laughs> uh, we have two products of the factory by our quarter manager, into the distribution platform. The common thing about them is love for Groovy. So we serve the Groovy community. Groovy is distributed from Gitray. Groovy is built with the factory, and we use Groovy in home. The user plugin <coughs> for the factory is written in Groovy, and the whole web interface of Gitray is written in Rails, which means Groovy as well. So, um, someone knows who those are. Someone ever heard about the Java Fastlabs? The book or the show? Okay, so those are George Block and Neil Gaffner, one of the founders of Java, one of the mo two of the most influ influential people of, uh, in the Java world, and they, starting uh, Oracle World 2001, uh, had a great series of talks named the Java Fastlabs. Um, and uh, those were actually uh, a parody to a great radio show called Carto. And those are Click and Clack that Travel Grub. Good. Yeah, so this is a very popular radio show uh, running since 1977, um, which is almost 40 years. And, and uh, Java Puzzlers is a parody to those guys, and we try to step on the folders of giants and do the group of puzzles. So, uh, uh, tell us how it yeah. works. Okay, so the drill is, uh, those two of us here, we'll see if we're enter entertaining or not. Uh, yeah, can you switch to? We give you uh, puzzle questions, uh, and then we ask you to vote for the right answer. If you give the correct answer, uh, we'll throw sh some shirts and frogs at you. So if you give the correct answer and you're capable of explaining your, explaining your answer, you get a shirt. If not, you get a frog. So. Shorts are, these shirts are very cool, so try. And this is our uh, official Twitter handler. We actually have a, it's, uh, it's a Twitter account, not just handler, right? We have both. Yeah. What's your, is that the Twitter handle? This is the yeah. Twitter handler for your comments. Yeah, you know, but there is, a, we'll there is an account like that, account Groovy Puzzles. Well, we'll talk about it in the end. And uh, just one rule, don't cheat. Okay, so uh, no Googling, no uh, looking up the answers elsewhere. No Groovy Console, <laughs> no uh, IntelliJ. Sorry, guys. Let's go. Someone, know, someone knows uh, what the correction of code looks like, one of the core computers of Groovy. This is how it looks. So yeah, he was there on the Okay, and, and all the questions are correct uh, to this version. Probably some of them will be fixed and stopping to be puzzles in the future, but at the moment what you see should puzzle you in the latest version of group. Okay, so if you accept the challenge, so Bao hit me with your first one. Alright, so let's start. So guys, you might heard about Grish, which is a great uh, group conference uh, in Madrid running actually very soon now, and uh, I have a puzzle of mine after this conference. Yeah. So this is the code, very, very simple, really simple. We start very, uh, um, very easy. So um, this is a, a groovy uh, object. It has two properties, uh, the name and the year, the name of the, and here we create an object of conference, give the name Rich and the year uh, 2014, and then I try to iterate over the object. Okay. And print whatever inside. Alright? All right. So here are the options. Option number uh, option A is going to print pairs of name of the property and the value of the property of all the properties of 
this object. Option number two, it will print him the object conference. Mm -hmm. It won't compile it or won't run because you cannot do each on, a, on an object. Or it will print only the values of the two properties that I initialize the object. Okay, let, let me think about it. Uh, I assume Groovy is uh, smart enough to figure out that when you have a, a class with properties, it has to print out the name of the class with the name of the properties. So it's going to print the class name, then iterate on the properties. So uh, my guess is A. Well, a. Yeah. Nice. All right. Yeah. So what do you think? Who thinks you have the right and it is A? Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Who thinks you have some trust? From the Who thinks you have some trust? It is B. It will print to string of the object. Okay, double dance. How about you cannot iterate over an object? Okay, double dance for that. And who thinks it will only print the state of the object? Yeah, okay, that's weird. Thank you for being brave and <laughs> selecting <laughs> this by yourself only. Okay, so the correct answer is B. Someone knows why. And here is your chance to get a t-shirt or at least a frog. Excuse me? Why it is B? Why it print lands the object when it actually should iterate over it? It's not terrible. Okay, so if it wasn't terrible, probably do that. It can death can take any object type right? and because it has only one object in this and you have not implemented two string of it. it yeah, okay, so that's a frog. That's a frog. Okay. But we need to go deeper in order to throw some t-shirts here. So let's see what actually happens. Was it? <laughs> yeah, somebody at the back will give it back. <laughs> Each is a method of an object in Groovy and not of a collection or, or a list or something. Uh -huh. And each is implemented in the following way. We convert an object to being collection and then iterate through it. How we convert an object? We have a lot of options. What can be converted to collection? But if all of those fa fail, as in our case, we will just create a collection with one element. And this is what happens. Ele a collection with one element is created and then we iterate through it. There is an object to it and we print it. Make sense? All right. Nice. Now give me something. Okay. So I'll treat you with the uh, vodka. Okay. That's a good you way that to you start. Have, uh, Russian okay, origins. I'm, so. I'm Russian. I'm Russian. Okay. Go for it. Okay. So simple one. Let's start with a simple one. Minus three, abs. Okay. Okay. What do you think? Three. At the moment, seem legit. No okay. such method there. No such method there. Minus three. Okay. Execution, Execution failure. failure. Okay. So it's definitely no, no such method there. Whoever no groovy or was in my talk here yesterday know that you can actually invoke objects on numbers because they are a method on, on numbers because they are objects. So this is apps of a number, which is fine. A, um, execution failure, I don't see it here. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think you're tricking me. I think it will just work. I'm going to see. Uh, sorry, with A. With A. It should work. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Who thinks it will work? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just one yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. Alright, who thinks that you cannot call metal apps on three? I just told you, I told you yesterday it should work and I told you just now it should work. Okay, <laughs> how about minus three? Okay, okay, more hands. And how about it won't run for any reason? Yeah, right, it's groovy, everything should run, right? Okay. Okay, let's see. Whoa! So, yeah. <laughs> How that happened? Yeah, what, what do you think? Somebody who, who, who said minus three? Oh, okay, that's a t-shirt. That's a t-shirt. What's the okay. size? Like medium, right? Medium. Now let's see your football skills. Let me try my throwing skills. Ah! <laughs> okay, so say, yeah, you, you were right. So basically if you uh, open up the uh, Groovy console and you open up the uh, AST uh, transformation console you will see that uh, the minus is done last 
So basically you have minus on an abs of, of three, so it gives you back minus three. How do you fix it? Yeah, so first thing is uh, just put parentheses, which we will see a lot. Or you can uh, just use an intermediate value and then the uh, compiler is, uh, job is, is more clear for it. So it's just the uh, abs on okay. minus three. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Okay, so, so. I've, I've, I actually tried it. Tried it this morning because we are and and I think that it didn't work for me because I typed in here and nothing happened. Okay, so what did you expect to happen if you don't have a print line? Ah, okay, that okay. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, so I just will, I will just. Add okay, so let, let's add a print line. So yeah, okay. it will be your next puzzler actually. So if we add a print line, what would be printed out? Minus three, like uh, before. Yeah. Three. Okay. My, uh, three and the null pointer exception, or minus three and the null pointer exception. Yeah, okay, but that's, that's easy, we just fixed it, right? We added parentheses, and now it's three. <laughs> so so, so wait, wait, what, what, what do you guys think, before we confuse you? Uh, <laughs> who thinks minus three? Okay, one, brave one. Three? Yeah. Quite a few. Uh, option C, three and the null pointer, pointer exception. Nobody, okay. Minus three and the null pointer exception. Okay. okay. Quite a few. What do you think, Bob? So I told you we fixed it. Definitely gonna be B. B. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So quite a few said and rightfully. How that happened? So yeah. So, so Groovy guys think that if they don't use parentheses, everything will be okay and the compiler will figure out what's going on. It's not yeah, always the case. Yes. So basically, if you do minus three and apps, it's going to do the print first and it's going to uh, try to do an apps on the result of the print line, which is null. So, so this is going to be executed and since print line returns void, exactly. which means like a null in Groovy. It's a void, exactly. Yeah. Then you get an output exception. Fixing it. So coming from the uh, go of Lisp, just add parentheses again. Okay. So uh, once you do that, you're all good. The evaluation of the apps comes before the print line, and this everything. looks like Lisp. Yeah, <coughs> a little bit. Or you can uh, uh, just use like before an intermediate value, and that fixes it as well. Let's go move forward. Uh, yeah, and the credit for that is for uh, Ken that came up with this puzzle. And he has a birthday today. Good. <laughs> I didn't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, my turn now. Okay, I'm going to ask you about primitives. Uh, that's, that should be easy, right? Okay, that's the code. What do you think about it? Uh, give me a moment. So you have x, which is an int. Okay, probably an int class. If it's Groovy, it's going to mean the int class. We, you pr we, we print line and then we do a if x assigned to long, what the hell? And then we print it and then we do it the same for Boolean just without parentheses. What? You were drunk when you wrote it? <laughs> okay, so I'll give you options and then here it will be easy, right? Uh huh. Will int even compile or run? Will it print int long boolean? Mm -hmm. Or will it print the upper classes of those primitives? Just three options. Yeah, here we go for the other oh, one. Okay. Thanks. I think it's too easy, you only need one. Uh, <coughs> so I think it will probably, you're trying to trick me and it will be D. So it will print, no actually, yeah. Uh, D. So it's going to print int and then it's going to evaluate false on all the rest of them and not print anything. That's, that's a brave option. What do you say, guys? Any of you think that it will ever run? How, how many of you think it won't run? All right. How about printing the primitives? Okay. And how about printing the wrappers? And who mm -hmm. thinks this code will ever compile in Ruby and print int and false for those? Only you have. Well, oh, it okay. definitely won't stop. Okay? Let's be clear. There is no way 
peace will run. Okay, good. Now let's see why. Someone has any ideas what's wrong with here? Okay, you know what? Let's clean the table, let's remove everything that's totally ridiculous, and then we'll talk about the smart guys. Okay, so let's see why. First of all, as you have mentioned, this is totally okay, right? Uh -huh. Because int is a type and we print it and it's fine. Okay? So far, so good. Now, the third one is also very, very simple. That's for sure what's wrong. Right. Because this is not Boolean, whatever. Okay? So the really interesting question is what about this one? Anyone has any ideas? Will it compile or will it run? And why? Of course. Yeah, this is an assignment. Yeah. But you have another pair of parentheses around it. That, yeah, so the, the whole trick is we don't have a double equals. It's because it doesn't have a has billion function, so it doesn't evaluate anything, it's a false. I don't know. Okay, right, okay. So that's that's a tricky one. That's a real tricky one. The thing is, it runs. And it's even evaluated true. Now let's see why. So you see, this is an ST tree of this expression. Without the double parenthesis, when we just add x equals boolean or something, mm -hmm. this is what we have. A simple binary expression. And a binary expression, uh, sorry, a simple boolean expression, without the double parenthesis. And there is no way it can be a binary expression, it's not a boolean expression, so it cannot be used in if. I'm talking about this guy. This is a binary expression. It's not a Boolean expression. It cannot be used in if. But look what we did now. We wrapped it in another power of parentheses, just as the author of list told us to do. And suddenly, we have, we have another type of expression. And anything in Groovy, which is uh, not a binary expression can be treated as a boolean. So it is a boolean expression suddenly, although it won't make much sense, right? Okay. That's it. Nice. Yeah, parentheses. I wouldn't say that's a good <coughs> good case for it. All right. Next one. Next one. Okay, we've done it. Oops. Yeah, you know the game, the clue. Let's play the cube. Okay. So we have a closure named whodunit, and we have uh, uh, curly braces inside okay. that return the butler did it. And we print, we, we call the closure and print the result. All right. And my question is simple. What would be the printed out result? Okay. Okay. Sounds so good. your options. Yep. Null pointer. Uh, whodunit closure. And uh, the reference for the closure, start apparel. Okay. The butler did it. Okay? okay. Very simple. Yeah, Short and simple. It is very simple. Look what's going on here. This is a closure, right? Mm -hmm. And this is another closure that returns this closure. This is the last statement of the closure, so it will be returned. Are you sure? Yeah. This okay. is a closure, and it's returning from another closure. So, according to, to the email who done it, will return this closure and it will be printed. Okay. So the answer is B. Right? Simple. B. Okay. Okay guys, what do you think? Who thinks it's A? No, yeah, no. Who thinks it's B? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. How about C? Welcome back. Alright. Mm. Couple of hands. How about the butler did it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's see what's going on. Okay. This is very sad. So, uh, the guy in the white shirt, you said C, why? Uh, why? That's correct. Why? <laughs> okay, that's yeah, a frog. It's a, it's a froggy. It's a froggy. It's a froggy, but um, so you have. Let's see what happens. I'm getting good at it. Good. This. 
Okay. So what happens is that the compiler cannot be sure if your curly braces is a block of code or if it's a closure. Okay, so the fix is really easy. You just have to assist the compiler a little bit and give this uh, arrow that uh, teaches the compiler that we want a closure indeed. And then it will so print. So without the, the that, this is just a block of code that in Java and in Groovy you can just start curly braces anywhere in the code and do a block of code. Yeah, but the compiler cannot be sure what you want, right. what you, what you want it to do. Yes, that will fix it as well. Yeah, correct. We just, as much as we dislike parentheses, we dislike return statement as well. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the Groovy way to fix it. Very nice. And the, this, this came from uh, Diego Gote. Yeah, he's okay. a Spanish guy, one of the in, guys involved in the Greek conference that we mentioned earlier. Cool. Yeah, mad Groovy skills. Who's doing the next right. one? So, uh, yeah, okay. This is mine, apparently. Yeah. And um, here we are going to talk about accessing the public property, right? Nothing too fancy. And it will be very easy again. So here we have a trade. And just in one sentence, trade is like an interface, but it can have state and method, right? So here is a trade called public, and it has one public property. It is very, very public and it's called public, and he's very public. And then we have a class that implements this trade, which means that everything in the trade will be accessible from the instance of the class, right? It's like extend class or implement interface with some stuff inside. And then I create a new object that is called public property from this property guy. And my question to you, Yuav, is what code you will use to access this property. Okay. Can you Here are me? your options. Yeah. Thank you. You can use the field accessor in Groovy. Add property will access the field. Looks legit. You can use some random okay. class uh, traits name double underscores and property. Okay. You can use get property because it is a property. Or, or you can just access it like that because it's public field. Okay. So, what do you say? so both A, C, and D look legit to me. Uh, I would go with A. All right. Looks like the canonical way to get to a property. What do you say, guys? How many of you think it's A? Okay. Now you trust. I'm your, not your, convincing you someone. Trust yeah, I can see that. Who thinks it's B? <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. How about C? Guys, if you want vote, you won't get any froggies or t-shirts. How about C? Okay. All right, how about D? Okay. Yeah, that's, that actually makes sense. But guys, no. this is a group of puzzles. <laughs> Seriously? Of course it will be B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, what do you say about that? I have no clue. And I have two questions for you. So, what's up with this uh, strange double underscore name? Because I take your answer to be right, so... Okay. And how the hell am I supposed to know this kind of stuff? Yeah, okay, so here's your answer. First of all, the cryptic name is security by cryptic names. The whole idea is that you won't have access to public property. Huh? You shouldn't access it. The answer to the second question is read the documentation. It's all there. <laughs> this is the documentation about property, about trades on Groovy, uh, Groovy site. And here is the interesting part. While trades support public fields, it's not recommended to use them hmm. and consider them the best practice. That's the reason that it is scripted. Okay. And here's an explanation of how to access them after all, if you really, really want to do that. Okay, it's okay. really cryptic. Yeah, that was the Thanks. Nice all right, let's move on. Let's move on. So, question for you about ranges. Okay, so, ranges are nice. I like the simple short ones. So, we have a range of uh, 1.0 to 
to 10.0. All right. Okay. And then we do an assertion whether or not the range contains 5.0. All right. And then we print uh, whether or not range contains 5.6. Okay. That sounds totally. So easy. what will happen here? First option is that the assertion will fail, and we will get five. Five is not there. A runtime issue. False, so it will print false. 5.6 is not there. The assertion will pass. Right. True, so again. And null pointer exception. Okay. What do you so think? So there is no way, I don't see any way for null pointer exception. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, so consider, I would say that everything will work and it will print true. Considering this is Groovy yep. pattern stock, I will just give one of the random answers. I will say A because non A nor B seem make any sense to me. So let's go with it. Okay. Who what thinks it's it? uh, A? Who thinks it's A? What about B? Right, couple of hands. How about C? Yeah, that should work. Okay. Agree? Not on the exception, you know? It's always valid option, right? Always mm -hmm. will happen. All right. All right, so... You well... <laughs> Who said B, by the way? Why? Why? Does it, does it treat the range so it's ints rather than uh, doubles? Or? You have, it's valid range, right? Yeah. It just counts by one, it's counts by one. It's one, it counts by... Range set by one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, this is it. That's, that's a feature. That's a short. That's a t-shirt, and let's see what's happening here. What size? Medium. That's a four. Yeah. Oops. Medium, medium, medium. Oops. <laughs> in, in the general direction. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's look at what's going on. So we'll do it step by step, okay? So the first thing we have to do is uncover the class of range. And that's easy. We just print out... Uh, uh, the class name, okay. and we see that's an object range, Groovy Lang object range. All right. Yes. Okay. Step two, we are going to uh, inspect the contains method of a range, and we can see that it it's using an iterator, and it iterates over the elements of the range, and it checks <coughs> whether the range contains or not, whether the iterator uh, is uh, equal. Okay. So, yeah, there is no Java doc, but it's cool. Uh, no Groovy doc either. So step three is we're going to print, we're going to try it out. So we're going to do it ourselves. We're going to print the iteration and we can see that indeed it's a one by one step uh, for yeah, this range. Yeah, going by one. That's the okay. reason why five or six is not there. Yeah. Uh, question, is there a way to say do it by one to one? Yeah, so here we go to the here we go. Okay. So let's look at the solution. So, so yeah, th there is another method that calls that is called contains within bounds, which will give you true for 5.6. So it's because a it uses compare instead of iterate. Yeah, and, and I have to say that I, I I don't like this solution because you know words have meanings. And when it's a contains, for me, it should be contained there. No, I kind of disagree with you. I think that you should be able to know, you, sh you should know what the range is going to be made out of. So, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah. So, this is what I would fix, right? I definitely would fix it because from 1.0 to 10.0 does contain 5.6. So, and this is what I would do. Mm -hmm. I don't care being it an object <coughs> range or any other kind of range, and I would expect creating a type for real number ranges. It can be a real range, or continuous range, or full range, whatever. And in this type, in this new type, I would delegate contains to contains within bounds. Right? And then okay. the word contains actually would return me the real value. Okay. okay? So, yeah, now, there is an issue. I'm not the first. In 2008. Right, which makes it what? Eighty seven years now? Eight years? Um, someone already mentioned it. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, you didn't even vote for it, so 
What did you expect? It's and it's already <laughs> closed, it's too late. Yeah, it's, it's marked as won't fix by the Groovy guys, so uh, looks like you're in minority. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next, next one for you oh. as well. Yeah, so uh, Scott uh, brought this one, thank you very much. Okay, next. And, yeah. So we are staying with ranges, and okay. we're going to, I'm going to ask you this. You, we have a range, this one is simple, it's just 0 to 9. Okay. And we're doing an each on the range, and we print the uh, range elements minus one. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, so let's, let's see what the options are. So minus one, zero, one, two, three, four, Yeah, that's, like, that's, that's the right answer. That should, should work, right? Okay. Zero, one, two, three, until nine. It just disregards the minus one. Uh, a list of uh, zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Or a list of minus one, zero, one, or all, all up to eight. Yeah. Okay. So, what is? So first of all, I don't see any trick here, so I will go for eight. But I know you. You have some trick inside, and I would say that for the lack of parentheses, minus one is disregarded, so it will be B. Okay. What do you guys think? Who thinks it's A? <coughs> Who thinks it's okay. B? Guys, no t-shirts, no voting. C. Okay, good guys. Okay, D. how about D? Which one? Which one? A is print line of the values, D is the print line of the values. It's a list. One is a list, one is a value. And okay, D? Okay, so you have, what is the answer? So, yeah, indeed it's C. Uh, anyone who answers, you want to explain why? Great. Great. Yeah, so that's this true. is very true. What size do you want? Whoa, whatever. Yeah, something. Ah, uh, no, PowerPoint just died. Yeah, okay. So I'll find the large for you in the meantime. Oops, yeah. Sorry about that. Are we back? You have to fire up PowerPoint. Yeah, I tried. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Ah, yeah, you okay. don't have anything open? Yeah. Okay, guys, sorry <laughs> about that. Um, no images. Where are we? Uh, ranges. Ranges, ranges, ranges. Go back, go back. Maps. Yeah, it's here. Yep. Yeah, this one. Hope we will see some images, right? Oh. Yeah, no images. Shit. You have another one? Uh... Yeah, I'll try to open another copy. Sorry about that, guys. Just yeah. PowerPoint just died on us. And now there are no images. Let's go with, uh, open Java one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay guys, so we have plan B. And uh, we were here. Amazed by PowerPoint. Okay, so that was an absolutely right answer. Okay, so yeah. So this is a range. This is a list with one element, and we remove the one element from the list. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Actually, three most of the audience. Good job. Okay, that's okay, another one from it. Ken. Nice. Okay. okay, talk to me. Remember the talk like a pirate day from last year? Let's do a little bit of pirate talk. So I'm going to ask you about treasure maps. Okay? So you know how it works. There is a map, 
and the x inside the net points to the treasure. Right? This is how it works. So here we go. We have it x and we put the treasure under the x. Okay? And then we get it back. And print the value. Okay. Very simple. Those are the options. Okay. Those are children with exception. Mm -hmm. Now, treasure, that's how it should work. And blue screen of death, we almost had that, right? <laughs> we had a PowerPoint crash. Mm -hmm. So now let's see if we can get to blue screen of death on my on on, uh, on my. Okay. okay. Uh, let me see. We have a string which is X and we define a map with X and treasure. Okay. I say C. Looks uh C, right? Yeah. That looks legit. Yeah. Who thinks it's A? Okay, double hands how about B? Whoa. Interesting. C, it will just work. Yeah, you got some credibility back. <laughs> and the who thinks okay. it's going to crash on us now. Yeah well. <laughs> Well, the answer is B. And a lot of hands were here, now I want to write answer. Why it was B? It's because you can't use a defined string in the map definition when you do it with the, the Ruby syntax. You have to use actual string keys in the, when you're defining it. That, that's yeah, a fog. That's, that's, that's a fog. Yeah, it's a fog. What else? Yeah. Yes, that's a t-shirt. Thank you very much. Good catch. That's exactly what happened. And here, when you have a value, key is always literal, even if it is number three. So, we have a lot of fixes for that. First of all, parentheses. <laughs> I will always fix that. <laughs> and or we use put instead of the groovy syntax, then it will be an integer. Or we can do something like that, which is a crazy way to achieve the same. Right? This will also work. Or we can just use this. Mm -hmm. Give me All some right. more pirate stuff, Bob. All right, here is another map. And now we have more than one route to get to the treasure. We have two. So let's put two roots to get to the treasure, and the rest is the same. Now we have the key, and look, I converted to the string for you in the most bizarre options of the previous slide, uh -huh. and now I print the value. Okay. okay. That's, that's fine, I think. Let's see. Now the general exception, now treasure and kernel panic. <laughs> I took it hard, <laughs> the crash. Okay. Uh, let's see, we have a two. What's the type of a two? Probably a string again. Key equals map two. Okay, I go with treasure again. I'm, I think you're just trying to trick me again. Yeah, that's for sure. For sure trying to trick me. Who thinks it's A? Who thinks it's B? Right? Who thinks now it will work? Just want to zoom in. <laughs> Alright. And um, kernel panic. That's my option. Alright. So, yes. You won't find the game. Why? Okay. And yes. The key is an integer, The key is an integer, but we just said it's always string. If it's If it's Java identifier. Almost. That's definitely a frog. And you know why it wasn't <coughs> this time? It wasn't yeah, yeah. Like, you know what? That's on the other, on the other thing. I think that that's an issue also. Well, so default is an integral no matter what, except when it's not. Except for numbers. Numbers are not. We love exceptions. Yeah. So. Um, how to check it? Very simple. You can check the type of the key set and you will see that this is an integer. 
Right. Yeah, that's kind of confusing. Who was the one that answered correctly? Yeah, I think the... the Just yeah, there. so you... It's definitely a frog and mature evaluation. Ah, okay, good, ah, okay. okay. <laughs> so you will have, you will try next time. Okay. Is the next one. Okay. So, and Guillaume is uh, the project leader of Groovy, uh, gave up this now, and, uh, okay, yeah. Okay. Do you have something for me? Yeah. So, yeah, save the date, we'll deal with dates. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, you have a list of longs. Yeah. Okay. And you take a date. Okay. And you put it into the list. You append right. it to the list. Yep. Simple print line. Well, it's not very simple. Let me and give I you the. Let, let me give you your options. Okay. Give me. Give me some. Startup failure. All right. One, two, three, and the date, whatever it was when we did that. Okay. One, two, three, and the date as a long. Okay. Or class cast exception. Yeah. All right. So I know. I, I see. I see where you're taking. Me. So you put the date here inside the list of blocks. Uh -huh. And there are actually three options. It won't get there, and then I will get either a start of failure or pass cast exception. It will get there as a date, but that doesn't make any sense because the list is a list of blocks. Or it will be converted to long automatically and then get inside the list. Mm -hmm. And I definitely go for C because I know that Groovy is very good with converting stuff transparently behind the scenes and it probably knows that date is backed up by a long so it will do as long on the date and put it correctly. Okay. I go with C. So let's see who thinks like you. Who thinks it's uh, A? Nobody. Yeah, no, we have one. Ah, hand. one? Okay. How about B? B. Okay. okay. How about C? Thank you, guys. And class class exception? Yeah, that makes sense, okay. right? Well, Startup failure, not much. Everything compiled and groovy, but in runtime, it can do weird okay. stuff. Okay. So let's see. Uh, uh, so it's B. Wait a second. I know what happened. You know what happened? Yeah. It was a ratio. Well, not correct. that ratio. <laughs> that ratio. Yeah, that is correct. So the type of the of the list basically gets erased, and you get a list of instead of generic, you get a list of uh, objects. But this true in runtime. I declared this for the compile time. Yeah, but that's Groovy. So if you want to get around this, so the Groovy doesn't have any type. Okay, so. Uh, what you can do uh, in Groovy is basically insert anything anywhere. So if you have a list, the good. list becomes a list of objects. Okay, and you can uh, insert anything into this All list. All right. So, so Groovy doesn't do anything. It's a list of blocks. That's the erasure. Therefore, That's the erasure. Yeah, that it the doesn't know. For, for Groovy, it's a list of objects. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's another, that's thing another shot. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's exactly right. So to to get your uh, compiler to fix it, you can compile static, and then you have a strongly typed uh, list. Uh, right. Yeah. So Good one. so the thing is in Groovy, compilation is much more relaxed than in Java, and the generic types are kind of documentation, type of kind of hint, right? Because this is the optional type. But when you turn on the, comp the compile static, it becomes as strong as Java and won't and will do the compile time checks, and then it will actually want to compile as you raise your hand for the option A. Okay, let me, let me give you another one. Okay, go ahead. Oh, that was a really nice song back in the day, I remember it. Okay, no music for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's check the meta class thing. Okay. okay so there, there is this Groovy. Okay. In Groovy, there is this thing called the meta class, which is a yep. built-in uh, meta uh, uh, information on, on a class. Okay. So we define a map. Okay. And in this map, we put a key named meta class. All right. And the value of the key is frequency. And then we print what's the map meta class bow. Okay. What would it be? Missing method exception. What's the blah 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 blah? So it's uh, the the object of uh, this. Uh, it's two string of the uh, yeah, the two two string of the meta. Of, so it contains yeah. both the class and the meta. 
what's the to string of the of the map or what's the frequency okay so right so there are basically two options here this can invoke get meta class mm -hmm. as a normal object or this can get the meta class value from the map so uh -huh. I will go with you know what? That looks very good. I'm going with it. Okay. Who thinks it's this? Thing. Who thinks it's B? It will bring the meta class. Who thinks it's C? It will bring the meta class something of the map. And who thinks it will work this time? Yeah, one guy. And you. And yeah, you. you're both right. <laughs> Why? The question is why. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's a frog, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we get a frog. Any ideas why it works? It's challenging. <laughs> yeah, that's an issue. Definitely. The other very different Okay. The size? Large. Yeah, okay. So let's. The question is we have. Two valid options here, right? We have two valid options. One is to get in the key from the value, and the other is to evoke in the get method. Get method. Exactly. So let's see. So remember what your mom told you? If you uh, overwrite too much, it's uh, overload too much. It's not good. So this is what exactly what happens. Is you have the uh, meta class on the map that's overloaded and you have the map uh, uh, it's overloaded for get uh, meta class and you have it uh, also on the class itself so uh, it cannot be overloaded further overloaded okay so Govi has to pick one uh, and that's exactly what happens and uh, yeah. yeah that's it's completely kind of confusing uh, as well good news the only place this confusion happens, it's only in maps, and only for the few properties that map class has, which is class and meta class. Yeah. So the solution is very simple. Don't use the string meta class or the string class as keys for maps, yeah. and then you're safe. Yeah. So the, make, uh, the map has precedence and uh, yeah. You're not supposed to know that unless you run into this, uh, oh, of course. Or and that's another one. That's another one from here. Next. Okay, any vegetarians in the audience? Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So, okay, and now this is a very simple code, the very simple method that returns whether a something is a prime number or not. Okay, very simple. I think you already got it, right? Yeah, it's a normal <laughs> algorithm to do that. You want to see it again? No, no, go ahead. Right, so here are the options. Okay. 4 is prime. 4 is not a prime. Uh -huh. Number formal exception. Missing method exception. Any ideas? Okay, so... Uh I think it will be number format exception because I think <coughs> that you cannot force a four to be a double or. All right. Yeah. So, who thinks it's A? Yeah, all right. Who thinks it's B? C? Guys, you have not just vote. Come on, who cares? <laughs> Pick something. Using method exception? Yeah, alright. Okay. So the answer is A. Oh. <laughs> Who knows why? Yeah. It'll always return true because you're returning from the E and not from the Great. Right. Yeah. I told you try again. Sure. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, so what happens here is calling the local the local return. Right. Let's look at it here. One. This is a closure on every element of the stack. Closure has its own scope. So return from here returns 
from the closure and not from the method. This is what's called a local return. The problem is the method each returns void, doesn't return anything. So it will be just ignored. This what always will be returned, right? It returns now, doesn't void. No one cares about it, and we just return it. There are a lot of ways to fix it. First would be just using any instead of using each. Any already returns boolean. So we just need to do the check if it uh, divides or not, and then just return. Mm -hmm. The other option will be just rethinking the algorithm completely, or maybe using for instead of closure, because then a local return won't happen because for doesn't have its own return. A lot of things, and there is a whole story about it that a uh, can wrote, so you can go and read about it. So let us scan again, of course, and now. Um, I love Van Halen. Van Halen, yeah. Go yep. for it. Okay. So we have a class, Van Halen, with a static method jump, and we are uh, just calling a method called lyrics, uh, and we implemented the method missing here. Okay. All right. So that's a standard way for Groovy to, as a, as a, to, to put a fallback method. And we're calling uh, the method lyrics, which doesn't exist. And then we call the jump method, which is printing something. So what will be printed out? Here's the code again. Here's the, here are your options. Here are the lyrics. Right. Here are the null. Yep. Startup failure. Missing method exception. Okay, so let me, let me see. Here we are going, this is kind of, <coughs> This is a gesturing, and we try to call a non existing method here. It goes here, return on lyrics. Here are the lyrics. This is what I see. Okay. I go for A. Let's see what others think. Yep. Who thinks it's A? How about here are the null? How about B? Hmm. Okay, startup failure, won't compile. Or missing method exception. Okay, okay, that's that game that got the most. Let's see. So yeah. Yeah, good job guys. <laughs> and the question is why? Understand. It's not you're in set yeah. Set the missing on an instant. Yeah, you're in a static context and then the missing is from an object. Exactly. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's the yeah. trick. So okay. size? Uh, Great. Alright. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll you are absolutely right. Invoke missing method, and this what happens when the method missing is invoked, should have an instance that it works with. Yeah. So let's see how to fix it. You cannot invoke yeah. method missing in the context. No, no signature of method. Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And it's an easy fix. You do a static method missing implementation. That That's will. a very cryptic yeah, name once again. I agree. So what will be the better solution? Okay. Not so use stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. So next one for you. Uh, okay. Pi. All right. That's a nice one. Okay, so we have a double that is equals to, uh, three. And okay. we print line uh, the value of value, point 0.14 is double. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> okay. We have a very Something, vivid uh, session today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you have to get it right, otherwise, yeah, otherwise strange things will happen. Uh, okay. True. Okay. Missing property exception. Right. False. Missing method exception. Okay. So, I think you try <laughs> to trick me, but I got it. Okay. So this is what I know. When we have here something that written is this way, it returns it refers to a property. So 14 will return to will refer to a property, and there is no property 14 on 3, so 
I know the answer. It definitely will be missing from our list. Okay. Check with the audience. I'm positive. Who's with me? Who thinks it's A? True. How about B? Alright, not much. C? Hmm. Nice. What about D? Yeah, how about that? So yeah, it's it. <laughs> Any ideas? Yeah, it's, it's a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's Good. a show. Okay. All right. So, so, here we go. First of all, why it's not a property? Why we didn't fail on property missing exception? That's why. Starting. The check whether it's property or not is based Oops. on <laughs> whether it can be a valid identifier for a property name. And the answer is no. Because name can be a property, but fortune cannot be a property. Exactly. And that's why it's in green, which means it is a string, right? So you can trust in your ID here because ID told you it cannot be a string. So why is it false anyway? Let's see. Okay, so let's print it out and see. So if you do value 14, okay? Yep. So basically, it prints the value of. Uh, it knows it, it's not going to be a method call. Yeah. So it's, it prints the value, which is 3, 0, it's a double, okay. and then 14. So that's the and you're, we're <laughs> asking whether or not that's a double. And right. that's definitely not a double by conversion. I know what it is. It's a spring frame of version. <laughs> it could be. But it's not a double. <laughs> OK. OK. Now uh, that's, that's a very lovely one. Yeah. That's one. OK, so uh, someone knows what this acronym stands for. In the, yeah. Very good. That's a frog. You have a frog already? OK, so you want to <laughs> give me another. But that's good. OK. So, uh, yeah, it's in French. And um, yeah, we can ask the Groovy is very French related language. Uh, two of the four core committers in Groovy are French. Yes? Uh, so let's see what's up with the uh, responsible name. Uh, okay, so I have a class invite, and it has property attending to one. And then I create a new instance out of it, and I add one to the admin list and print it. Mm. What do you say? Okay, let me look at it again. We have a class. Okay, with the property attending. Attendees equals invite attending plus one. Okay. So give me the other option. It'll be one, so the plus won't have any effect. Yeah. It'll be two, which is my intent, apparently. Or will it be the missing properties? Okay, I think it's going to be a startup failure just because you have parentheses there and, and I think you're trying to trick me. So, yeah, I, I will go with startup failure. Okay, this is Groovy and everything compiles is Groovy, so you're definitely going to be in the minority. No. Who thinks it will compile? Told you. N no one? Who okay. thinks that some parentheses is missing and that's why the plus didn't work? Who thinks it will actually? do the job. Right, that makes sense. And who thinks it will throw missing property exception on something unclear? Okay, so you have, you were right. It won't even compile. <laughs> do I get a frog? That's what you should do, because it's groovy, and everything compiles in groovy. Any ideas why? Almost. That's definitely a frog because this is a very right direction. And now there is no way in the world you can guess what's going on. That's okay. The thing is, look at the arrow. So this is IntelliJ. It's going to go in white and then unable to resolve class invite.attendee. Any 
clearer now? Mm. What what that thing is clearer now? It is? Yes, yeah, thank you very much. What time? This looks to Groovy Lexer as a class cast. This is a package <coughs> and this is a class name. So how do you fix it? Yeah. We have a number of ways to fix it. First of all, right, we just create this won't look like us anymore. Other option will be this won't like us anymore as well. And I want the third option from you guys. <laughs> look, I want to see if you learned something today. And parenthesis, thank you very much. If you take this code and add another pair of parentheses to it, <laughs> it will work. <laughs> and I think with that, yeah, okay. So Cedric is the one who to blame, and because this is a bug of lecture, and he is the one that okay. should fix it uh, in the next major probing. Okay, so let's go to the conclusions. All right. Let's see. Okay, so you should write clear code. Yeah, so with about. Groovy, I, I, would, I would like to say one general sentence on this one. So Groovy is, mo is much more powerful than Java, right? And you saw it yesterday if you are doing my code and uh, talk and if you, of course, work with Groovy. But it's also um, very, very dangerous. Because always with great power comes great responsibility. So here are you always going to give you some rules that will make your code more secure, more readable, but still very, very powerful. Okay, so. And if you do something funky, just comment in it. So uh, people will know what you meant to do. Uh, sometimes it's just a bug. Like, like, uh, like what you thought, it's a bug, but it's not a bug. And. Uh, yeah, if you use static code analysis such as in IntelliJ or in the Groovy console, yeah, you will be, uh, th things will be a lot clearer. Uh, read the docs. And yeah, don't code like my brother. And there is a seventh rule. <laughs> and what's the seventh rule? What? Exactly, use a lot of parentheses. Always add parentheses. <laughs> Alright guys, so a couple of uh, housekeeping towards the end. Um, this is a, I think if I'm not an error, this will be the last run of the first season of the Groovy Puzzles. And we're just getting started, we already have second season coming, you will uh, see a lot of those talks throughout the year with new puzzles, even more bizarre, even stranger, even more parentheses, everything you like about this one. and. You can actually contribute. If you ever encounter any puzzlers with Groovy, fun stuff, send to us to puzzlers.jpro.com or by Twitter, by tweeting us at Groovy Puzzlers, and we will send you more cool t shirts for your puzzles. And people actually get t shirts and tweet about it. So participate in the Groovy Puzzlers, and it will be a lot of fun ahead. And if you see another Groovy Puzzles and Agenda of Conference you go to, go in, it will be new stuff next time. Alright? So, if you have any positive feedback, praise us on Twitter with this hashtag, or tweet us at Groovy Puzzles. This is you up, this is me. If you have a negative feedback, we welcome it as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. <laughs> have 10 minutes if you have any questions. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, last week, Cedric posted a very interesting blog post named Who is Groovy? I definitely recommend you to Google it up. The 
outcome of this post is for the whole life of Groovy, for the 10 years of Groovy, always the, con the community contributed most than the people who were actually paid to get Groovy. Even in the years when they have six employees of Pivotal working with Groovy, the community contributed more. The most um, contributing guy of Groovy in all times, in all sales years, it's Dr. Paul King, who never worked on Groovy. Mm -hmm. okay, so definitely Groovy is not dead, that's for sure. It might slow down a little bit, of course, but I'm positive 100% that someone will pick up this challenge. There are great companies with a lot of money heavily invested in Groovy. You can think about Netflix, you can think about um, uh, Google with Groovy Android support, you know, and, and, and etc. etc. Big enterprises which um, might or might not uh, support that open source in the past now have great investment in Groovy. So it can be just a business decision to pick it up, like Oracle picked up Java back in the day just because they have a lot of Java developers, right? So. I'm positive it won't go anywhere, it will continue to evolve, and uh, I even think that we still have a good chance to see Groovy 3 out this year. Yep. Right, guys, thank you very much. Thanks.